Hi guys, we're back. Big Screen Hooligans here with a very unique match. We have Kervin, the Big Screen Hooligans Quiz Champion, versus Simon, social media giant of the Quick Giants. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> um, it's a very unique quiz. It's a movie debate. Who can argue their point the best? I've, I've posed four questions before, this, before the quiz started, just to like give these guys time to have themselves prepared for it. Um, the idea is that I'll, I pose the question, they will give me the options, why the option is the best, and then argue against the person for each option. <laughs> it's a debate. Okay. I thought yeah. you're just going to give us, you know, you're going to run the rule on this. I will give you, I will say, uh, Simon, you go first. And then I will say, uh, like, for question one, <clears throat> which is, who is uh, the best MCU villain? Yeah. I will say, you'll give me an option and you'll say why it's the best. And then I'll okay. give Kirby a chance to say why his is the best. And then a chance for you to give a counter argument. A rebuttal. To to be okay. why this isn't actually the basic one. Yeah. So, are we ready? Some mass debating. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Some mass debating. Up Three men in a room, mass debating. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, first question is, who is the best Marvel Cinematic Universe villain? Simon, given that you're the guest, and, and uh, I think you're going to be this, who is your option? Yeah, so, so you know now, um, I, I love this man, eh? and I'm just going to show you some of my things. <laughs> and this is from Disneyland Paris, and this is from, I just got to take a lot, to be honest with you. It's actually very cheap, it's like 150 there. But um, he's my favorite, but again, this is so debatable, and you know how, it's, I've been feeling this like some sort of way since I watched it, started watching um, Cobra Kai, like um, understanding everybody's part and everybody's like a, a hero in the type of way. You know what I mean? Story, yeah. Really yeah. Really and really for me, like people look at Thanos and like, like with, I always talk about Thanos because he's my favorite, like my ultimate favorite. And to be honest with you, I think that he was the one that should have won and it should have ended at Infinity War and not at <laughs> in game at all. That like, should have just stayed fucking dead. And um, that's what I would have wanted to do because he won fair and square, just to be honest. He did. He did. And for me, like, that's why I called it because that was case through and he had good intentions and was the thing about it that you, it kind of made sense to everybody we wanted to do. Like, we spoke the other day about um, what this is called now. You see, like, just double resources and whatever. But I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you have the cinematics like, 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 towards why that, you, you know like what I mean? Double the resources. Why, why, yeah, why I mean, you say that's that there's no need for a movie then. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is like, okay, yes, more sanity, so you yeah, take extra or more something. No, yes, it's, 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 it's like that. And if uh, so, that's why it becomes a hard thing because I don't think he was a villain. If I think there's a real villain, I think it's still Mamu who is actually evil and obviously from the other okay. dimension. Of the, so, you're saying I don't know, the, motivations really are, the motivations are determined that you think that this guy is actually the best villain. He actually is he's the, the wrong protagonist throughout the series. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it's very complicated too. Like, even like, let's talk about Hela or we talk about Killmonger. They were both seen as like villains, but if you understand what happened with Hela as well and like what the father did and all this guy based on how they were, it, it's very, very complicated to understand that these people also got their lives fucked up and then we are perceived as evil because they're trying to make right to get vengeance or whatever. But yeah, I'd have to say Thanos, but again, it's, it's such a, a double edged sword for that. For me, it okay. is. Thanos, the strong reason why. Uh, Kevin, what is your choice? I like the fact that I was very ambivalent about it because that means he doesn't believe in his own argument. <laughs> <laughs> I firmly 100% believe in my <laughs> choice. <laughs> I told them. People I firmly 100% believe in my choice. Yeah. The best MCU villain, without a doubt, is yeah. Michael Keaton in Spider Man Homecoming as Adrian Toomes, aka Vulture. It's not just it was fun, eh? the yeah, yeah. Was fun. The Vulture, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. Um, you even touched on something. If you look at if you look at villain, think about yourself. Who are the people we fear? We don't fear the fancy freaking, um, you know, CGI purple cloud in the sky. Still, start pissed about Galactus in Fantastic Four, but you, that's not <laughs> stuff that frightens you. A villain yeah. is to frighten you. Who's the guy that frightens you? He's the guy in your street that'll put a gun to your head. <laughs> that frightens your family. That's yeah. a villain. And the thing that makes Michael Keaton's villain so compelling is that he's hundred percent relatable. What's his origin story? He was yeah. the normal blue collar worker. He got screwed over by Tony Stark. His company, is the, I mean, Stark was a weapons, weapons merchant before, made his millions, billions, becomes a hero, 
<laughs> destroy stuff, and then starts a company to clean up the mess <laughs> that he created. <laughs> it, it, it's yeah. a complete capitalist thing, and they screw this almond, this honest yeah. blue collar working guy out of a deal. And then think about it, eh? When he decides yeah. to steal the alien technology and, and, he, and he turns to sort of villainy, when does it happen? It happens in 2012. Eight years, this guy's around. The Avengers know nothing. They don't know this guy exists. <laughs> he's just doing his thing. He's under the radar. He never never punches above his weight. He knows exactly what he's doing. Not that the only reason he, yeah, the only yeah. reason he gets, he gets freaking rich on it, and the only reason he ever actually gets caught out, if you want to think about it, is by pure chance, because Spider-Man's trying to date his girlfriend. <laughs> so trying to date, date his daughter. That, that scene where he opened the door and yeah, the then, was like climbing me. Oh, the and, was Spider -Man, climbing. Oh, and, and Spider-Man's interference is the only thing that forces him to up his plans and do that crazy daring mud air heist of a plane. Yeah. If it wasn't with that shit, no one would ever know this guy was there. He's the Kaiser Sozi of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> <laughs> he rules it all. And that scene in the car where he just figures out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man in one conversation. The dude is yeah. clever as hell and it's threatening. When he turns around and he tells him, don't mess with me, I will kill everyone you love. love you believe it. It's like, <laughs> he's going to ruin that kid's world. <laughs> it's like, I, I would just say to that, not arguing for Simon's part, but it clearly showed that at the end, he still had a soft spot for Spider-Man. Even though that's, he that's, yeah. a, that's the thing. He, he's always, he's a family man first. Everything you can see, he loves his family. He tells his family to move to another place so they don't see him get locked up. At the end, when, when Spider-Man sort of saves his life, he respects himself. He doesn't, he doesn't give away Spider-Man's secret. He doesn't say who to speak to Parker. He, he keeps yeah. the secret. He still has that, that model framework that he works within, even though he knows he's a villain and he's doing bad things. But he knows he's doing bad things because he was put in that position by the heroes. And even then, yeah. he's not out for revenge. He hates Tony Stark, but he's not plotting some megalomaniacal, stupid, complicated yeah plot to just go take this guy out he just handles his business takes care of his family and kicks ass no no like no that's okay far from oh. home that was also crazy like all those disgruntled workers as well and tony like shutting him down <laughs> and now they come up with this massive worldwide powerpoint presentation and okay i think we both need, i think we both need to re, i think we both need to work our answer and take the light of this that tony stark is the best model <laughs> 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 They would have been a very out of the box pick because everything that goes bad is because of Tony Stark in some way. Alteron. <laughs> yes. But um, you, yeah, that's uh, I like that. Um, that was nice for your stuff. So um, mm. uh, Simon, what do you uh, any rebuttal to why you think Thanos is better than the Vulture? Um, and it's, 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 I, I love this explanation. I thought that one was amazing there. It, it makes, resonates within you, like, just to, to see, like, you're the little small guy and this guy's above you making these decisions, like, not even to know his name and all that kind of shit, man. It, it's a good um, arc for a, um, for a, like a Spider-Man movie and stuff, man. like, Avengers has these big things that come and they happen there. It's a nice way to, to localize it and make everybody feel like this could happen to them and, you know, explain it. So I do like um, I like what you said so there. It makes me so understand it more. small time. I like it. That's it. <laughs> I can't hear you. Sorry. I didn't hear you, Lena. Michael Keaton's Vulture is small time. So it's not that man. It's just not as notable <laughs> as like Tomamu or Hela or Loki or something. It's just like that. It's it's nice to 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 have something like that. It is. It does resonate over. I have to agree with him. I would I would love to hear why Kevin thinks that Thanos is is, is, is the Vulture is better than Thanos. I would love to hear. <laughs> just because he actually technically was successful. Like Thanos had this, okay, Thanos was successful and all, but he was, Thanos, yes. is, Thanos, Thanos was successful. Died, then we know. He was actually yes. successful and died knowing he won. You think about it like that. Yeah, he, he died, died knowing, he won. knowing he won. It's a different, completely different Thanos that comes in. in but the work is all. done. The work is done. <laughs> the work is done. It will it's always like, be done. <laughs> Look at Thanos' mother tried to kill him. Let's just be honest about that. He was a mutant <laughs> baby. He had no love. And then obviously you could see he was like a major scientist and then he warned everybody on Titan and still nothing happened. And what did he have to do? He was he had to resort to so fucking killing everybody. Stark, what you're saying is that he was a young <laughs> Why is so soft? Why is so soft, Darren? Yeah, he's very soft. I made my thing louder as well. Sorry. It just happened just now. Oh, mm. Can you hear me now, Peter? It's still the a same. little bit. Yeah. Uh, I can hear you, but it's just not very loud. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, man. Uh. Now, I was, I was going to say, like, if you look at what they, what, what, what they accomplished and their goals and stuff, Thanos had this big, 
lofty ambitions and what he was doing, but you, you mentioned it earlier, he thought of all this big plan and then didn't think of the simpler solution, which was, you know, that's not no kill movie there. No <laughs> Yes, <movie> but there. <laughs> <laughs> they would be, they could, they would be, they, they could be, Avengers could be out there stopping him from giving too much food to people. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Thanos fights obesity. Is that going to be the movie? <laughs> if his whole plan was to double him, <laughs> but he still went about it the same you way. He's still, you still super it. soft. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, look, he, look to, for Thanos to achieve his plan, he still needed, there's still a movie there because Thanos still needed the Infinity Gauntlet. And to get yeah. the Infinity Gauntlet, he still had to go around. So there's still a movie there. Just okay, when it came down so to it, he thought, of the, he thought of the most complex freaking solution possible. Can I just talk about one thing that Ebony Mao's death was so underwhelming that he was such a bigger character than that just to have him blast out into space like an alien to the evidence of Peter Parker made. You Come on, man. <laughs> Ebony Mao is so strong. He's like <laughs> fucking the right hand man to Thanos. Yeah? What's up? That's the same, you still, actually. You still saw. Ah, you, did you change from your, from your headset to your... Uh... Just on the strength computer. Can you hear me now? It's a little better. You were talking about you were talking about Ebony Mao. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just it's just, it's just a, a side thing. Was okay. Thing. So, okay, closing arguments for this particular question: Why Thanos was better than um, Vulture? Thanos mother tried to kill him. Let's just be honest with you. <laughs> as well as he was devil lab, so he was born a mutant. He, bought, he lost his whole planet. Because I didn't listen to him, and all he's trying to do is do the right thing. But in the end of the day, again, I'm still conflicted about this. He kills everybody. He's a cuck. He's a mad guy. He's the best villain. I, I can't anymore because I, I love him so much. Man. Like I can't talk about him as a villain because I don't trust him. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I lose. I lose. Let's just, let's just, let's just, yeah, let's let's just skip over what that. What that. Yeah. Uh, is interesting point. Oh, well, we just we'll just skip over what that says about Simon as a person that he loves the bride that wiped out billions of people. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just skip over that <laughs> and say that. But he did for the right reason. He did it for the right reason. The thing is that you say, essentially knocked out half of his army as is, is, is well, like, largely. Yeah, no, he, he, yeah, as well as half of, of like other main people in the galaxy, like Galactus's people or whoever else's people, right? Everyone. And that doesn't sit right with anybody. It's so weird that they would have let it go for five years. I mean, <laughs> yo, that's hectic. Besides the Avengers. I don't know. Um, for me, for, for, for the Vulture, like I said, he's, he's, he's the scariest yeah. villain just because he's not trying to know do cosmic shit he's really out there just to do it as well and he's gonna kill you he, and he's you mentioned about the complex and morality and the morality of the vulture is so complex it's, it's so great because he, he barely kills people he, he doesn't he doesn't he's willing to do it when he has to do it he but he knows shocker. yeah shocker shocker <laughs> but he didn't feel any remorse about it he wasn't remorseful so he, he's, he's, he's compelling in that you know he's not the type of villain who's gonna he's not a cartoon villain that's the main yeah, thing he's not a cartoon mustache twirling villain even though he's in a comic book movie and he's still having fun and he's got giant fucking claw feet and big wings he's not a cartoon villain he's he's, he's he feels real he feels like this could really be a dude who's really when he threatens you you're really gonna shit your pants because he could really hurt you and, and that to me is villainy proper villainy yeah okay now that i think uh, like he's also like he reminds me a little bit of what's it um even vanko uh, Iron Man too. Mm. That was also he was so tough. He was a good one as well. Okay, so Flash. That, that's the end of the that's the end yeah. of the first question. Um, look, I, I, uh, I liked uh, both choices. I think Simon's arguments uh, for Thanos was very good, but he lost. He kind of lost it a little bit when yeah. he started arguing for the vulture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no man, it's just that I don't want him. I don't want him to win as best villain because I don't want him to be the best villain. I don't think he was. So you are saying he should actually be the best good guy? In the... yeah. I do. I think strong. at the end of the day, we all agreed Tony Stark is the best villain. <laughs> okay, yeah. so the first, so yeah. so the score after the first question is one to Kevin. I just no to Simon. That's fine. Because the vault, he, he, he emphasized why, even though the, the vulture is a human being, he's an extremely menacing character. Who, yeah. who, he instills a, a sense of dread in everyone he comes across, even the people that work for him. So, I mean, that's a, I think that's, that's a power that not even, not even Tanner's probably had. His children, while they hated him, they still loved him. In so, cool. uh, the second question was, Who's your favorite, uh, uh, who's the best DC hero in movies? So you could have chosen a variety of characters that have appeared in movies, 
I should say, before you announce that Simon is a really I too on this because of his choice. He's what? Up I what did I say? He's up I <laughs> Simon's choice. Up I this too. one was now Henry, Cavill. Need to Henry Cavill and Superman. So you really have to two here. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if you know this about me, Simon. That's my favorite Superman, and it's probably my favorite one of my favorites. Uh, so, I mean, so, look what he did with so, um, what's the um, Twitcher, which is amazing. I can't wait for the next oh, yeah, storm yeah, to come out. Uh, okay, so, and, and, uh, uh, Urban, what was your choice? I went with Wonder Woman. Uh, Gal, Gal Gadot has Wonder Woman. Ooh. Ooh. And oh, let's politics. just get, let's just put it out there. She's the best politics. looking. Let's just put it straight out there. Just, let's, not, let's, not glo- let's not glaze over that. Okay. She's the attractive woman. I'm not um, going to give you a point. Hey, Jason Momoa no, says hi. <laughs> so, Look, I'm not, dude, Jason Momoa, I'm not going to, I'm not going to deny that dudes a, a dude's attractive. My wife said already at, uh, if, if she ever got the opportunity, she will leave me for him. <laughs> and I, I'll be honest, I would leave me for him as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, same as the previous question. This time we did it. First. Okay. Uh, reason why you think a uh, wild one girl did as one woman? So, um, firstly, it's just, it's just so bloody weird to me still that it took so many years for Gal Gadot to actually become or someone to play one woman on screen. The fact that for so many years the, the DC writers and those idiots were saying it's too complex, you can't put a woman. It's, why? Like why? When, when eventually brought this, she, she came with a pretty topical and pretty, um, you know very applicable themes and motifs that she brought to the table. And it's like, these are things that should have been there all along. We should have have someone, a hero that represented this. And what she represents is she's the best of the other, of the Trinity in that if you look at the Trinity, which is now Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, the three top tier DC heroes, uh, she's, she's the middle ground between them. She, she represents the, the power, the majesty kind of thing of, of, of Superman. You know, he's, he's got that aura about him, that, that leadership ability, that public persona, that charisma. She's got that. Batman's argument is obviously his best uh, trait is always his endurance, his ability to overcome like strong obstacles. Wonder Woman's that as well. And, that, and they exemplify that in that movie, in the movie where she's placed in man's world, as they keep referring to it. You know? So the glass, you mean the, so the glass, um, um, glass ceiling, ceiling kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, she, she gets put in that. She gets un- un- underestimated all the time just because of who she is. Um, it'll be interesting to see with a new movie how they tackle that, if they're still going to play on that or not. Because it looks funny. Yeah, it does look fun as hell. Colorful yeah. as hell. That's another thing. Colorful. Like Superman, you say Superman. Change of Superman, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Superman is great. I, I actually like when Henry Cavill Superman. I, I dig. But it's a dark Superman. And, I'm, and I mean that. I like that, though. I, I mean yeah, that from a... <laughs> From a, from a moralistic and just costume point of view. Look at Wonder Woman, she comes out there, she's a, she's a literal shining beacon of you know, heroism to people when she shows up on the field. She's yeah. there to inspire, not just to, to think about herself inwardly about you know, her place and her power that she has to have responsibility for. She's there to use her power to inspire others, to lead others, to make them rise up to show to people that, you know, there's a different way of doing things than you previously did things. Um, that's, that's hero. That's a hero to me. I mean, Batman, okay. Batman does a lot of stuff, but he does it from the shadows. Superman should be doing a lot of stuff up in the front, but you know, Zack Snyder was like, nah, angry. Okay, so, so. Simon, <laughs> oh. why did you choose Henry Oh, no, I'm actually going to change it to the real Aquaman, Vincent Chase. Oh, but I'm going to be there. Let me just go back. <laughs> really, really, Vincent Chase? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't appear in the I movie. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> he was the real Aquaman, though. Come on, James Cameron. <laughs> he did the show Aquaman. entourage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, look, I've just been such a massive fan of Henry Cavill and to see, like, his acting and the way his portrayal of Superman came in. After, what's the other one's name? Brandon? What's Ralph. Someone? Brandon Ralph. Yeah, and I, I, that was on the, probably the worst thing I've ever seen. I, I will Superman. fight you on that. I'll fight you in the you streets like that, on one? that one. No, no, sorry. I will like fight that? you in the streets on that one. The movie? No, this, we, we're, not, we, we're not talking about the movie, but Brandon Ralph is as Superman. Oh, For no, me, he oh. looks like Superman. No, no, no. Yes, I agree with that. It's, it's a I shitty found, movie. It's a shitty yeah, movie. Yeah, I found the movie. like, And I mean, at that time, I, I really enjoyed Kevin Spacey as well. And um, obviously, I'm getting off topic, but the movie just paced so slowly as well. But anyway, it's, it's a terrible movie. 
Yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to what we were talking about now, which is obviously the, the indicable part about it. Um, I think that he really embodies it. I feel like that, um, the way that he even like, got ready for the role, the way that he like he looks at Kendall's side when he comes there, and obviously it's obviously talking about Man of Steel here. But it was such a, a, an enormous and tremendous way that they brought so much more factors into the movie. Like, you've got to meet Rascal Crow, obviously his dad, like get all this exemplary backstory. But you see him was trying to find himself as well as a hero and where his place is. And unfortunately, Amy Smart was cast as his love interest, which is very, very not funny. Oh, yeah. But um, what's, what's her name? name? Amy Adams. <laughs> Amy Adams. Adams. Yeah, Amy, Amy Smart Adams. was a different character completely. She yes. was a different actress. She was in Crank and that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yes, she was the blonde one from Road Trip and stuff, right? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really found that he really embodied it for me. Like, since Christopher Reeve and the way that it was done, you know, like the, the whole like Superman taking control of everything, but also a darker depiction of it was really, really fun for me to watch because we've always seen him be portrayed in one way. And you've got, got to see this amazing new way of um, fucking people using powers and coming out just kind of swinging and blazing. And the, what's the thing called the actor that was going through the earth and things like that? And you saw him giving the, the, the himself. Basic- Basically, with a weaponized dubstep. Yeah. <laughs> and like, then you, then you see that iconic thing where he needs the sun to get his powers back. And that could be such a direction of it. He, he actually took on it all very, very well. And he was such a good person to, 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 to believe in again. And I really, really enjoyed it after, again, the, the Superman that we saw with, with the rock. Now, I think that's his name, right? I really found him fantastic. But the thing is that I am such a fanboy of Andy Cavill since then, Count of Monte Cristo and Man from Uncle and Mission Impossible. He was so amazing in that. I noticed you didn't um, mention Immortals. Why not? Come yeah. on. I like Immortals. Nah, I'm not going to mention Immortals. <laughs> no. I don't mention that one. But yeah. yeah. But um, I, should, I should say that uh, at the stage that you know, this particular argument, Kevin has a mountain to climb in my book. The bias, the bias. <laughs> <that day. laughs> <laughs> How much good sisters did you organize for him? The honest family. <laughs> did you guys see him actually in the new Enola Holmes yes, movie? Yes, I him. watched it. He's actually pretty yeah. good in the movie. He's, he's yeah, superb. I, I like it as well. Yeah, that, I was watching that shirt. That shirt is that shirt was custom made. No, no way in hell. He's getting that shirt to some Victorian like in a supermarket or something. That's custom made shirts. <laughs> Let me just touch my toes quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, Kevin, what, um, any arguments, uh, uh, rebuttal yes. to, to, to I will, why I will, think, I will, why you I will think Wonder Woman, so what, remember both these characters actually make an appearance in Batman the first yeah. time mm-hmm. you see the doll, you know, but she obviously had her own movie after that, but the first time we see her as Wonder Woman in the, is Batman vs. Superman, so any uh, rebuttal to I'm not related to that. No, you you wasted you wasted like two minutes explaining that now because it's not related to that. <laughs> I was going to say though that this all for me Superman is two things. It's it's not just one thing. Superman is two things. It's Clark Kent and Superman, and 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 I feel that that Henry Cavill's portrayal of Superman is pretty good, but I feel he's lacking as Clark Kent. Um, that's it's, he's, he's, he's completely underdeveloped as Clark Kent, and 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 that to me is an important part of Superman because that. That informs Superman. The Clark Kent informs Superman. Clark Kent is who Superman. He, you know, the argument like always is the emotional that, side type of. Thing. Yes, it's, it's 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 that's the real person basically. Uh, at underneath that upbringing, and that's what that. As much as I enjoyed Man of Steel, which I really did, I thought it was pretty cool. And I think, like you mentioned, Zack Snyder did a fantastic way. It's a fantastic job of actually showing what it's like when a couple of sun gods are fighting it out on, on planet Earth. That, that, yeah. That's what would happen, you know? Dope. But he, so dope. He, he leans a bit too hard into the whole nihilism thing. Um, Mark Wade and, and, and Lionel Francis, you did Superman Birth at the comic book, which, was, which a lot of it, they took cues from it, which is Superman going and trying to understand his place in the world, trying to find himself, mm-hmm. you know, go. And they had a lot of that introspection that Superman does in the movie, but they make sure that, you know, Superman sees through that, that he that he rises above that, and he's still that. How do you call it? That lighter side of him. He's still that beacon of hope, and I mean, he says it himself, he's he's hope man. You know, hope is standing. <laughs> it's stumbling yeah. just hope. Okay. And, and I and, didn't hear any, any anything wrong with what you're saying. Not, <laughs> you're not piercing anything into him. Man. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm saying that, that I'm, I'm saying that that ding, he, that ding. doesn't happen in the movie. Doesn't. Where's one woman? She does that. She, as a hero, she rises above that. She has that verse and everything. She becomes, she, she stays that, you know, that 
comic book ideal that mm -hmm. you don't quite see in 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 in, in uh, and I know that the Superman, the Henry Cavill Superman, is a is the a more cynical world kind of Superman. You know, it's, it's, it's sort of reflection in the real of the world that we all live in right now. That, but that's, that's the whole point. That's the whole point of comic I mean, books. It's escapism. It's escapism. It's is. Esca comic books is escapism. It's okay. supposed to rise above. The whole point of Superman is he's supposed to be better than anything else. Okay. Quiet. <laughs> that's tough. That's really tough. <laughs> oh, <rebuttal. laughs> <laughs> um, don't bother he's going to give you the points anyway we need his face no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no I don't actually have any battle I just like <clears throat> sorry um, I say like um, with regards to the battle with um, I can't say anything bad because I'm all for like there's finally a balance between a, f a female coming into the DC universe and it's all everybody ever wanted you know for the longest time besides Catwoman and I mean Halle Berry was okay come on let's no. go into that no. just fine dude I, I still I still wake up with cold sweats thinking about that basketball scene in Catwoman. Yeah, I know it's bad. <laughs> I know, but I mean, I'm not going to say anything bad, like, you know. <laughs> but I think it's like they, they were waiting for this to happen, but I also feel like they, they made it so overpowered that she was ready to jump onto the battlefield at any cost. She was always ready to go first and things like that. You always felt like you were forced to... to it's like the first movie, you know, when you, you the, 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 like the, the character goes through so much. That, but the second movie, they had this major character arc that we are about to see right now that she just felt too overpowered. It's like when you have, when you're playing Call of Duty and there's this gun that you use that's so quiet that it kills everybody. It's like she was like that, you know what I mean? And it's just, just, just like, she just like, okay, I'm going to stand in front of all this Owens now because I'm a female now. And not to say that it's wrong, but they just kind of portrayed it as such the whole time. And it's a, it's a fantastic movie, but they did really, really make her overpowered with those powers and how everything that she accomplished, which is fine. But again, like we, we have to see what happens in the second movie. That's that's the only thing I can say about it because it's no, like no, a no, no. chess movie. Okay, so so as I have it for this for this question, there's a lot of interesting points raised. I think the breaking of the glass ceiling, the weekend, uh, talking, uh, the movie was too dark as a theme, a thematical situation. Um, I like dark so, movies, like. Yeah, no, I, night and everything. You guys act like uh, yeah, but that's the Nolan trip. Yeah. Simon's fault is on his side. Well, the movie's more grounded. It's different from what you normally see from what you're getting from comic book movies at the time. Some I love the backstory of Superman. Yeah. Like, you the, finally got to um, meet Wonder Woman. Was and all that there, wasn't, there wasn't a progression in the show how Wonder Woman's powers worked. She just showed, <laughs> she just showed Do you remember that, so, do you remember that scene there? Yeah. In um in um what's it Man of Steel where Zod is shouting, I will find him. I will <laughs> find him. <laughs> oh, just, I, I will find there. him. <laughs> hey Michael Shannon is not the type of guy you get to act to act very subtly. <laughs> yeah. So, was, he was no surprise. But... No surprise. Uh, Simon, yeah. you, you got me. Yeah. Why did I even bother showing up for this question? <laughs> <laughs> Um, best MCU movie. Um, uh, Simon gave me two options, but I think I'm going to go with the one that he chose was Thor Ragnarok, was his favorite. Yeah. And Kelvin, what is your choice? Captain America Winter Soldier. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, it's those two. It's only those two. So Simon, <laughs> those are the two. Kelvin, we first, the last time. That's so Infinity War. So you do your first. That's oh, me. So okay. this is the blockbuster one, right? Yeah, you're no, no, no. Best MCU no, no. movie. Best MCU movie. Yeah, I mean, look, like you were speaking earlier on about color and stuff. If you just think about yeah. Ranya Rock, you, you, the movie starts with all the heroes and all their faces, and you just see color and like, what's it that um, the party with all the colors in the sky when you throw the yeah. the holy one? All those things were happening for Hulk, and there was just so much pageantry happening. Then you had fucking Jeff Goldblum, who was amazing, and then obviously all these side characters. Um, what's it, Hobie's name? It's called like a rock again at the. Um, Cork, <laughs> amazing. I'm sorry, I can't remember every name that now, but um, I'm still having right. over. But I mean, what a, an amazing movie and also character arc because are you the god of um, what's the thunder? Or the god of Amos? Yeah, Amos, the god of thunder. <laughs> Man, but it was like you had every single thing in there. You had Loki and Thor coming back together again, and then even Loki trying to be a knight, but then again coming back again. You had the. Um, What's it other his name? Um, who was the right hand man of um, Hela as well? Who was bad oh, but then um, became oh, good. Call uh, Urban uh, um, yes, 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 Executioner. Yeah, and then Call, you had uh, him had his character. 
There were so much fucking things happening in that movie. We had Howl come back. We had Valkyrie. My goodness, we had a Britney Spears remix of Toxic of them fighting on the bridge, man. Bro. <laughs> Everything. They brought Ragnarok, man. Bro. They made it happen. There's nothing that Winter Soldier can have on this movie to even <laughs> decide this to come. When he's jumping in the air, just doing all those things. Come on, man. There's so much happening. So many characters. So much stories happening. It's amazing. Nothing in Ragnarok can just has to be for me the best one that I could say besides the Infinity War. No, 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 no. Uh, Some good points. I'm not going to deny it. If, I had to, if, if, if the question was asked definitely, if the question was asked is, what is the most fun and most entertaining oh, fun. MCU movie? <laughs> Without a doubt, Thor Ragnarok, but that's not the question. <laughs> the question is the best MCU movie. Okay. So the best MCU movie for me is still, even, even with Infinity War, with Endgame, everything, for two reasons, well, actually it's a bunch of reasons, but the two big ones, really. Um, first reason, it's just the actual repercussions of that movie. What actually happened? The whole point of Hydra being unveiled to have infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D., that repercussions, that was a game changer. It was, it was something that totally, you know, didn't just rearrange the pieces on the board. It kicked over the board. It, it completely reset the MCU. The effects were felt across, across movies. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., that TV series, which I love to this day, started was so crappy, but the moment that happened, that show went to another level. It, and it's across the board. It set the scene for so many movies to come because S.H.I.E.L.D. at that point was the, the spine of the MCU and it just shattered it. Um, and, and, and that, you can't argue, you can't argue. Against it. I mean, even look at, if you look at the Infinity War in-game, you know, two-piece movies by the two-part of the, if you look at the actual effect, yes, there was a massive effect, but it was kind of undone at the end. It was, it was, it was yeah. reset. Uh, that, that was that was like permanent ballsy, you know, do it and get it done, and everyone would just live with it. Okay. And I love that about the movie. I love that, it, and um, that they were willing to do that ballsy with it. And of course, on top of that as well, you have the actual theme and the, the writing, the character work, the political work. Because if there's one accusation that is always leveled at the Marvel movies, is that it's too lighthearted, too fluffy, too fun, and. Winter Soldier has some hilarious moments, some freaking hilarious one line and stuff. But with that, they balance it out by bringing in this actual proper meat to the story. You had Captain America at his best day, like his most complex best way yet to find his way where he's literally he's black and white morality in a, you know, in a gray world. You had, you had Scarlet, well, um, Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow as well. That's her best portrayal. You never know what side she's playing on there. She's permanently the actual proper true super spy playing one side against Hello. the other. You Hello. got Anthony Mackie being introduced. I mean, uh, uh, Pierce, oh. he's not the best character of all, but he's planned everything, you know. It's, I was going to say, it's, Robert Redford, how can you go against Robert Redford? Come on. Yeah, Robert, 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 and, and on top of that, all of that, you have the bloody action. There's never been any movies action in the MCU before and after Winter Soldier, that's like that. It, they took the, the choreography of that thing is insane. The fighting, the intention, there's no laser guns, there's no fancy powers, it's bone crunching, fist on face, that twirl that you know, Bucky does with a knife that, that'll give you an erection every single time you see <laughs> that thing. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. And then they also have the Winter Soldier, such a complex character that they managed to nail and his introduction is still the most badass. And if you ever want to introduce a, a, a character into a movie, it, as a director, if I can give a pro tip to any new character out there, all you have to do to make an impact is introduce your character by having him cap catching Captain America's shield like behind it. I mean, yeah. you got that. Everyone's like, what the fuck? That's the dude. <laughs> so, okay, so it's, it's an incredible movie. Yeah, no, that's great. Great positive points there. Um, any uh, rebuttal there from you, Simon, as to why yeah. oh, Ragnarok was better than <clears throat> Captain America? The Number one, there was no devil's anus in the Winter Soldier. So <laughs> there's that. And then number two, we <laughs> know the, the fact that um, Captain America was wrong because they should have actually uh, had the protections in place and not been fighting about um, what can I, what's it called now again? Um, Freedom. the, the, the <laughs> freedoms that you're supposed to be having. Because if that had happened, things that wouldn't have unfolded as they did in later movies. So for me, that was the one thing that always stuck with me. Like, so you're saying you was, support the Marvel always, Nazis? I do. There was, there was there's <laughs> actually protection around that. That's what I do think about that. In, in certain ways. Okay, he was wrong about Ultron. We'll give that to, uh, to, to everybody. It's just fucked up. But Vision wasn't bad. And 
it's just oh, just off topic. One division Taylor looks amazing. Um, <laughs> it does. But I, I watched the whole breakdown. I still sent it to you as well, my dad. It looks insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got a, if, you, if you if you if you want to ever if you want to if you got like uh, like twenty minutes of reading that you want to put aside for tomorrow, I'm doing this mm -hmm. massive massive post tomorrow on our site with. Uh, my very very wild theory about what is happening in one division and how it's actually setting up things in the names we, we, we can plus the video that is a crazy one crazy one specific mutant like how could possibly this mutants young avengers <laughs> uh, but yeah like it's, um, um, yeah look again like there was so many character arcs again inside there you you saw valkyrie find herself and become now the leader of asgard you got her introduced i mean the thing is that if you saw what Hela did like, as well, and you understand what happened, and when she broke down that whole old ceiling and revealed what other paintings was there, and Thor had no idea that this was before his time, and he learned about his father as well. I, I hear what you. I hear what you say. Yeah. And how so? Not to argue in your yeah to help you. Yeah. Him, just a question: If you are yeah. uh, if you are Hydra, right? Hela was trapped yeah. away from the from the world. If you but you are if you are Hydra, why do you allow the Avengers to actually see for the first time? Why would you allow it? <laughs> because we need to have the movies, my bro. Okay, check it, check it. Can you're biased now? Stop. <laughs> mm. <laughs> just it's a question. Now, it's I mean, not becoming too much now. <laughs> you know what my favorite part of, about them? Um, people from the first, like, all of the, of, of this, of the MCU. Like, I love Captain America with the soldier as a movie. But if you think about it all, you think, like, but why did they allow all that other stuff to occur? Oh, 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 I can actually, I can actually argue against that. I can actually argue against that. Okay, Just no, think no. about it's, it. This is part of your battle. Yeah, yeah. So, so think about it. So, up until that point, what, what did, what did the Avengers actually achieve that defeated Hydra's purposes? Where, where did they actually Nothing. work against Hydra? Nothing. 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 So why would, why would the Avengers, why would Hydra even be worried about them? Because it wasn't the Avengers that took down Hydra. It was basically them trying to bring Captain America. And they made a mistake in the end there. They tried to sort of bring him into the fold, not understanding his character. That's their mistake. They have no problem with the Avengers because keeping the Avengers around is a distraction. The Avengers can go fight aliens that appear in portals over New York City all the time. While that's happening, no one knows about Hydra that's running the government over this side. And, and uh, maybe it was a bad idea to whisper in each other's ears, say, oh, Hydra all the time. <laughs> Anybody can overhear that shit. Maybe, uh, yeah, then, that that, that, that might have been, been a red card right there. <laughs> I love that. And you know what was <laughs> also, a, a small thing that I like? Whenever you saw the Winter Soldier, then this, this little music starts playing, like a little bit of a thing whenever he comes on screen. Yeah, yeah, like a dog. Oh, that's, 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 actually, that's actually another point why it's such a great movie, because of how it <laughs> actually <laughs> hawks. Well. Because of, because of, no, because of how it hawks back to a... To, you know, Kevin Feige had this idea, we were saying that yeah. they were going forward, they don't want to make the same movies, they want to make movies that have different genres, basically. And, and unfortunately, for the, unfortunately, for the most part, it doesn't really work, except there, that's the perfect example. And take Robert Redford, you take him from, you know, the Three Days of the Condor, All the President's Men, yeah, you pull that guy in there, and then you bring those genre influences and you make them, like, really overt, and, and it just feels, like, and, okay, yes, they faked us out with Fury's death, but I mean, Fury dying in the, like, you know, earlier on was a big thing, plus, you can't Nobody beat Fury's dies. tombstone. You can't beat Fury's with... tombstone. Fury's, Fury's tombstone should win this. Should win this whole thing because Fury's tombstone is the is the quote from Pulp Fiction. It's Ezekiel versus yeah. like, that's uh, on his tombstone. Will... <laughs> Fury's I'll, vengeance. I'll, yeah. <laughs> I will break. I'll strike down with great vengeance and furious anger those who oppose those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> I will lay my vengeance upon thee. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of that question. Um, I have to say, this was actually closer than I thought it would be. I should say, I have personal biases to this question. I, for me, my favorite thing to do is to so the soldiers. I can hear you. Sorry. Can you hear me now? That's, I used to broke up there for a second now. It's broke up for a second there. Oh, yeah. No, I was just saying that my favorite movie is actually Captain America Winter Soldier. But yeah. uh, this, this actually it was closer than I thought it would be because although I like Thor Ragnarok, I think it's, it's something that's such a departure even more so than Captain America with the soldier from the whole MCU itself. Seeking space and all that kind of thing. You would expect that kind of movie from the Guardians like that. Yeah, but, yeah. it was just pure fun. There was, there was, a, few, there was a few interesting points uh, on, on regarding uh, uh, Thor right now. It was the, reun the reuniting of a lot of characters that we liked. Thor and Hulk and introducing someone new like Valkyrie. He's it's a friend from work. <laughs> <laughs> and also, more, most importantly, the movie had the devil's anus in. <laughs> and I, had to, I, I actually had to eventually side with 
the 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 soldiers all in schools. Better when there is. That's one of the only movies where the repercussions of the movie actually hold firm. Like the things that they do is never reversed in any way, and it holds firm throughout the whole entire season. It actually changes a lot of things going forward. Let me know about Shield. Let me know about Hydra and what they were before. And just the mere fact that the consequences of this movie actually actually stuck and actually had an effect later is actually the reason why. And this is the point that Kevin raised. I think. Mm-hmm. That is the reason why Kevin is going to win this. So, this movie, I'm just happy no one said Iron Man 3. I hate that movie. I love that movie. Absolutely, I hate what? it. I love that movie. I love it just because, yeah, just because I, at the, I, I love that movie because at the time I, I love it because okay, there's some there's some bad things I'm not gonna deny. There's some bad things in the movie, but the reason why I love that movie is, is that it takes it takes a line from Avengers and turns it into a movie because he basically does the whole thing with you know, Captain America asking, "What do you if take away the if take away the armor?" You know, and uh, yeah, he says it all line. I'm a billionaire philanthropist, but <laughs> playboy kind of thing. But that's what they do. They 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 strip him. They strip him out of the armor and they and they explore Tony Stark as a character, and I know now. It's it's most one of the most conflicting moments in the entire MCU for me. The 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 reveal of Trevor Slattery, you know, yeah. as <laughs> as the, the Mandarin. Yeah. Because props props to Marvel. I will praise them to the end of the earth for being able to pull that twist off and never getting out because it's a brilliant twist. But they sh- they shot the Mandarin like he's one of the most iconic <laughs> arc villains. <ever. laughs> the trailer was so fucked up. It was like not but, the movie, but anyway. But 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 did, but we did they waste Ben Kingsley? Ah, yes. Yeah, so. Well, but we're getting a new Mandarin, so yeah. a proper Mandarin, the real Mandarin. Well, no, he's the, his organization is called the Ten Rings. Yeah, but, 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 but the character of the character of Mandarin is I like what they did with Ben Kings because the character of the Mandarin is yeah. super problematic. Like he's funny. he's literally a ripoff of Fu Manchu and he's, he's basically a collection of very, very bad Asian stereotypes and, and caricatures. <laughs> so I love how they did it where they combined various Asian from all over, not just you know China, but they did various Asian things and motifs and, and iconography together. That was brilliant. So when that plot was happened, I was like, What? <laughs> okay. It's like, I can't hear you, sorry. Yeah, you're breaking up again. You can, it's voices cutting in and out now again. Yeah. What is yeah. happening yeah. there, bro? Can you hear me now? Are you in an earthquake? What's going on? Can you hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you. But oh, no, it's no. like, yeah, it's like going in and out. One. Okay. Um, so it's still while you're going on the final phase. Um, Okay. The priest. Your blockbuster, no? Yes. Yeah. What did you choose? Mad Sorry? Max Fury Road. Oh, okay. Oh, the twenty tens. <laughs> I mean, for the whole world, in a way. And what? Yeah. Was, uh, what was yours? Me? Yeah, mine is very, very conflicting because only uh, I just. I'm conflicted because I like different ways of movies being done, man. Like, like I wanted to choose between. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. And you want? Okay. That's a first okay. And then I just thought about annihilation. <laughs> no, only because oh man, like so listen, which one man. Do you want to go with? Huh? Which one do you want to go with? I'm gonna go with Beauty and the Beast, just to be honest with you. Why not? Fuck it. <laughs> Cause, cause I, 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 yeah, I support I support that decision because I really need to hear the contestations. <laughs> no, because it's, it's, I found it such a hard question to answer because the time was, of blockbuster really, is really, really like Lethal Weapon or Beverly Hills Cop and all those types of things back then. And I think the blockbuster 90s and Heat and Al Pacino and De Niro and on the poster and... It's, it's, it, feels, it feels like there was a time in a blockbuster was a blockbuster, but now it doesn't feel as 90s okay. as it ever did. So, so you know me, what I mean? So me, you go first. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'll, I will go first and I'll, I will explain why. I'm, firstly, I'm just going to say that uh, before anybody picks on it, because I see no one's picked on it yet, but um, it's, it's a, picking Mad Max Fury Road is a, is, a, is a bit of a controversial choice. 
if you just look at the actual proper definition of what a blockbuster is, it's supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, what is it? Can you, can you explain it's supposed, it to it's, me? Supposed, it's supposed to be two things. Usually popular and, and successful. Mad yeah, Max Fury okay. Road was usually I'm popular. Not not so financially successful. <laughs> I'm, I'm good on both, just so, so you know. So, we need to find so, money. So I, will, I, will, I will put that out there myself and say, yes, I know. But if you look at successful in commercial or successful in critical, because critically, it was fucking successful. <laughs> Uh, yes. It was massively successful. Commercially, yes, I can't help that the people are idiots and the world is pop, you know, populated by a bunch of people that have, that have taste that they don't want to go watch the movie in the cinema. But um, yeah, Mad Max, for me as well, when it comes to a blockbuster, right, um, you mentioned some of those movies you mentioned previously, like Lethal Weapon and other stuff, and, mm -hmm. and they, they are pinnacles of the genres. And, and, and that, to me, is Mad Max Fury Road. What is it? It's an action movie. 100% an action movie. It's not trying to do more than it can. It's not trying to overstuff it with complex characters. Yes, we do have some great characters in there. Um, um, video, obviously, you know, um, Fidiosa, Charlie Theron's Fidiosa is in there. They're great characters, but it is first and foremost, it's an action movie. And it excels as an action movie. It, it goes above and beyond anything else we've seen on skin. How people didn't die shooting those scenes is beyond me because there's some absolutely utterly insane things that that's happening in that movie um and this that level of action is, is just unheard of and it's non-stop it never lets up um and 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 you have um um uh, what's his name max himself um tom hardy. we've got tom hardy you got him and they do an unexpected thing by making him sort of be the co-star in his own movie uh, it catches everybody by surprise. It does a really, really, really unexpected thing. I mean, no one saw that coming. Um, and, yeah. and, and then gives rise to Charlize Theron's Furiosa. And it's not as if you know, people are arguing about this. Yes, it's Mad Max name on the cover. It's a, who cares? It's a freaking great movie. I mean, George Miller, he, 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 he wrote this, this absolutely insane character of, of Furiosa. And he just... Let her rip, just let Charlie's loose on that thing, and she just owns it. She just owns it. And even Tom Hardy, I mean, people say he doesn't play much in the role, he doesn't do much, but I think it's brilliant the way they played him. Yeah. If you think of how they played him, watch, watch his characters in the movie. When it starts off, he communicates in what? Just grunts. He doesn't speak because he's been on his own for so long, he's forgotten all sorts of human interaction. He's actual, there's actual progression because at the end of the movie, he's talking. He's like an old human being again, and it's yeah. actually pretty cool. And, Say again? He's the of the desert. Yes. <laughs> and, and then they have that, that, that non-stop chase scene, basically. That's what it is. It's a non-stop yeah. chase scene. And it's, it's a perfect chase scene. It's, it's, it's exemplifies everything you want in a chase scene in one movie. All the double crosses, the different crazy action. You've got a guy playing a flaming guitar wearing a red onesie on a bungee rope with massive speakers behind him like come on you, you can't talk that for spectacle and that's a blockbuster <laughs> spectacle bro. and the freaking dudes coming with the poles across and that pull out of cars it's incredible and it boasts iconic scenes iconic imagery iconic dialogue okay are we like the uh things that Oh, I, can't, I can't hear you, wait, I can't hear you at all. He says he, I want, he wants to believe you. I want to believe you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look, like this, um, it's, I'm not really fond of the animated one. I was never, ever really fond of it. It was just like another movie. And once I actually just watched this first one, like the, the new Disney started making all these ones, like live action again. I started getting into it and I was like, oh my goodness, just, they put in so much work. And one thing that I'm a sucker for is amazing soundtracks as well as um, choreography, pageantry, and looking at all the afters and everything. And if you watch the movie, and I know this sounds very, very weird, if you see how they, they choreograph to walk around each other and all the interactions with everything, and let's not even sort of get that Josh Gad was amazing as LeFou, and then we had Luke Evans as Gaston, and everyone's, no one's slick as Gaston, no one's quick as Gaston, no one's next, it's incredibly thick as Gaston. As Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's so much fun and everything that's happening in the movie we see the side characters, the people who are dancing, the, the backup dancers, everything that's happening within it and also the, the new way of portraying the beast as well with like understanding like um, 
his arc and like, giving him a new backstory about his losing of his mother as well as like sympathizing towards what it is. And again, it's a, it's a retelling of the same story, but with like favored actors and things. And they spent no amount of money. And okay, they spent 200 million on the movie and they made 1.3 billion or something in box office, which, which counts as a blockbuster if, if I'm checking both. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna buy that. <laughs> And I mean, it's not just because I could go to Sunrise Beach and I go right in the sand if I list to. Um, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's really, really for me, it was just so much fun to see like all these characters come together and like um, be our guest, be our guest. And then you have like Ewan McGregor <laughs> coming out and doing these massive, amazing voice things, which I never knew he could actually do. And Kevin Klein's in the ensemble. And we have Emma Thompson as well, which is an amazing cast with so much talent. And I never thought that I would like this movie, but I've watched it so many times. <laughs> and I promise you, I love it so much just because it brings out something that I never, never knew that I could appreciate something. And I've watched every single scene of this to see how much effort has gone. It's like, you spoke about the guy on the guitar, the guitar and the fire guitar and everything coming out. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's that. And you can see how much time and effort it's going to make you know, this amazing thing. And I just can't deny the fact that maybe we like, this is an amazing experience. I, mean, I don't know how to ex- ex- explain it, but the fact that it was no, everything no, no, no. that I never knew that it was going to be when no, I watched no. it the first time. I was like, I don't want to watch this, but I am watching this and it's amazing. I, I, I actually am here. This is a beautiful Now we're living here, the rebuttal from Turkey has to buy and actually get the bed bit of faster than you did it. So I, I was saying, I can hear him, I can hear him, but he's breaking up. He's breaking up. Oh. I heard what he said. I could hear him, but he's breaking up. Okay. So I have to admit, you know, the, the whole beauty for beauty and the beast choice threw me for a loop. I was not expecting it. I wasn't mentally, uh, you know, <laughs> intestinally prepared. <laughs> I don't like it to do the normal because I can do the, the things that I like. But I mean, that's just much more fun because so, I really love that movie. It's fun so if I, look, I'm, I've got I've got very little affinity to the original Disney animated movies. I, yeah. I, I just never really took to them. Um, I, mean, I watched them all, but I, well, not all of them, a bunch of them, yeah. some of them I didn't even watch, but I never took them. But uh, with that, when I watched this movie, I had seen Beat in the Beast original, and I had seen it a number of times. I think most people, even in an, unintentionally, most people had watched the original Beat in the Beast a number of times. Mm. Um, if I had one thing I'd, I'd criticize about is that they change up certain things in the movie, but it's in essence overall still a pretty faithful retelling of that original mm. story. And that has been the actual downfall of a lot of the the disney live action remakes is that they 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 do you know they slavishly uh, kind of obsessed with trying to retell that story yeah, and, like, isn't like aladdin like a shit like i didn't even bother to watch it aladdin's because... actually surprisingly good it's it's, yes, it's, it's surprisingly good okay. i did not expect to enjoy aladdin because I, I saw the reception i was like okay maybe i shouldn't watch this one they, no, and, and, that, that's, good. That's, and that's a movie where they make changes like some some pretty dramatic changes and those changes are good it's for the benefit okay. of the movie so in that regard, thank you for proving my point that they take it a bit, you know, a bit too faithful for my liking. And that's just me criticizing the movie because I can't criticize it as a blockbuster because it ticks all the boxes as a blockbuster. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, fun. it's, um, okay. I, I, yeah, I have to, I have to criticize the movie itself and say that it's not, it's a good movie. I, I think it's a good movie, but yeah. I don't think it's on that level. I, I think that they were always going to make the money anyways with this cost, with everything that they had coming in with Disney and getting them assembled. It was always going to make so much money in any so, case. That's the thing. You know what I mean? So, so I Simon, just enjoyed is, it. So Simon, what is your rebuttal to why Beauty and the Mad Max is better than Mad I Max? I can't. I love it. But the thing is that I always like, I hate the remakes. I, I will always identify with Mad Max as not a remake. I'm not going to say remake because it's not a remake at all. But it's just like, it's fucking Mel Gibson, man. I don't ever want it to not be that way. I hate it when the new Ghostbusters and stuff come out. I can't stand it. I can't stand what they do to Star Wars every single fucking time as well. Just leave stuff and let it be. And it's not for anything or one thing that to be different or anything like that. It's just that I have this memory in my mind and I have to say that I don't have to be compared to anything else because there's always going to be money to make of people like us when we want to feel that nostalgia and we're going to go watch it anyways. But I mean, I just... And I hope it doesn't ever get to the, the point of what has to go was this cut me, cut me so deep. Maybe. Okay. But you know what I mean? That's a, that's a good rebuttal. Um, I'm about I don't think it was my, a good rebuttal, but um, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to give my, my uh, a verdict. My, 
I, because I'm it's a movie place, you're still gonna go. I'm surprised you're gonna choose the piece you're best. He's not gonna choose you. I'm surprised by myself. So, well, points, points. I sang, I sang here today. <laughs> points raised by uh, and then work with money. Simon here, uh, sale, the work, the cost, the the the, the some the, the new chances they take with the movie. The movie's an actual blockbuster because it made a lot of money. It's a faithful telling of the story with a little bit of enhancements to the original. Um, with regards to uh, um, Mad Max, uh, Kervin's, uh, it was a critical hit. Um, they did a lot of Irish stuff. They brought us the character of Furiosa. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties there. Um, yeah, as I was saying, uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast surprised me that in this, let's just say, I have to make this clear, that my personal choice would be Mad Max over Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> arguments raised in this debate. I have to say, points raised for the Beauty and the Beast, the scale, the work, the plot cluster, uh, the fact uh, that it's, uh, it's a true retelling of the of the, of the original story with a little bit of embellishments and the argument mm -hmm. raised by Kervin as far as Mad Max being a critical hit, a lot of high risk things, introducing us the character of Furiosa, his argument against uh, what, um, uh, Beauty and the Beast said there was nothing new, but, I, but from the debate, clearly there were some new things as raised by uh, Simon in the movie, <laughs> new enough to, 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 ins to, to inspire him to believe that this was the best of the blockbusters of the two minutes. <laughs> and amazing, <laughs> I have to agree with Simon here. Come on! I said. Beauty and the Beast, best blockbuster <laughs> all used by Simon <laughs> for the 2010s. Unfortunately, oh. this is the final question, and we are tied at two. But oh, wait. what happens now? The, the, here we go. But the, given that we are tied at two, um, and given that Kevin is the champion, um, he actually had to win this debate outright for me to actually win it. And Simon, <laughs> Simon, is, a, Simon, Simon is a non media guy. He's a corruption. A media. No, a little bit, but a little bit. Yeah, no, but you, but you don't have your face credentials like, like Sam no. does. He goes, to, he goes to watch movies and actually critique them. You are coming as a, as, a, as, a, as a somewhat a novice to the whole uh, uh, media. So given that, Simon, you actually won this debate in my eyes. And, um, this, this, this is corruption, I tell you. Thank you, Darren <laughs> Gupta. You Thank you, Darren Gupta. <laughs> Simon wins the tie because, uh, because he, he's Simon. He has to win. This sounds, this sounds like a Manchester <laughs> United fan here. Yeah. Yeah. Simon's up, give him extra time <laughs> so they can win. <laughs> no, Darren, it's the same, but the quite top I one. Yeah, I really top. like the top. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, when I when I when I got to the when I got to the last question, right? I thought to myself, "There's no way that Simon's coming back here." Unfortunately, after the <laughs> and then how in Evan's name did it happen that Simon told me about Beauty and the Beast as being a bit of blockbuster? Then man, that threw me off my game. That threw me off my game. I was like, I will give him props. That threw me off my game. I did not expect that of all the movies. It was not the one I thought I'd be going up against. <laughs> Um, oh, uh, thank you, Simon, for, for, no for making yourself available for this unique yeah. opportunity. This is fine. I'd like to do this again. Um, yeah, no, we can we yeah. definitely discuss doing that again. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Your, um, no. I just want to ask you, have you guys watched Tenet and we can now yes, watch I've it? Yes, I've watched it twice. I, I haven't seen it yet. I've, uh, do I have to go to the bicycle to watch it? Or yes, can so I, don't, can, watch can you... don't watch us at home. Okay. I just haven't gone to although, the cinema. Although I will, from, from everybody I know that has seen it, I might say it might be best to watch it at home because then you can turn on subtitles. Because what do you mean? No, no, because the sound mixing in the movie, the sound mixing is, is it's a little off. And it's, but, and it's a movie where you really have to pay attention to plot and when hearing people speak and you can't make out what they're trying to, when they're trying to explain the plot, it might be a bit difficult. I went to watch it on my own, right? But my wife also wanted to watch it. So we went to watch it on Friday. I didn't give her oh. any spoilers going to the movie. I didn't hype it up in any way. I even gave the movie a personal, I still give it, Seven and a half out of ten because for own personal reasons and not a ten out of ten movie. But it's a movie that you have to see on the IMAX because the, the scale okay. of what he's doing in this movie. 
I'm not going to spoil the movie. Just go watch it while it's still at the IMAX. <laughs> um, is it, so, is there anything you'd like to plug? Uh, ah, my socials are Simon underscore Virgil. If you guys want to come and check me out, you can. Thank you so no much problem. for having I'll me. That in the, I'll put that in the description <laughs> of the video. Um, Kevin, your article for tomorrow, would you like to plug that? Would you want to send me a link? I can just put that. Critical hit. The... Yeah, you can do that. Criticalheat.net. It's all up in there. Um, yeah, I'm on, on Twitter, the Curvenator. Uh, you're not going to spell my name right. No one ever does, I know. So it's all right. It's fine. I've accepted it in my life now already. So you got, until, until the next time we do something, I guess you have to love, you have to love up, uh, love to the fact that you lost. You <laughs> no, no, no. I drew. Your option. I, I drew. I drew. <laughs> and then I got cheated <laughs> on. I, I drew. And then, and then Darren thought he's, he's bloody Zanu PF. And he could just rig, 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 just, just completely rig the election. Eh? Put one under the hat. <laughs> No, but um, thank you for joining us. Um, no problem. Hopefully, we'll do this one more time sometime mm -hmm. in the future. Cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah.